So Shannon Sharp has been fighting for his life since he dropped the interviews with Cat Williams and Monique because some very powerful celebs just got exposed on the podcast. And they do not like the negative attention that they have been getting since the interviews aired earlier this year. Now, if there's one thing that we know about these powerful celebs is that they do not like to be exposed. So they have had Shannon in their crosshairs since the interviews dropped. Well, Shannon has been having some mysterious issues with his podcast and Monique is convinced that Kevin Hart is at the root of it all seen. Not only did Kevin get roasted by both Cat Williams and Monique, but he has also been recently exposed as a handler for the Hollywood elite as well as gatekeeper. Well, Monique is not letting that slide. And she brought some receipts to reveal how Kevin and Tyler have allegedly been pulling strings to in Shannon Sharp and his Club Shay podcast. So what exactly was said about Kevin on Club Shay? And has Tarla Perry been making moves to silence Shannon for good? Well, Cat Williams was the first to tear into Kevin Hart on Club Shay. And y'all, he was vicious. Cat and Kevin have been on the outs for a minute now. And it all started a couple years ago when Kevin wore a dress. Which means I'm demand. And the arms are back up for another victory. Ted has never been shy about his feelings about black men in the industry being pushed to wear dress, as he sees it as an attempt to emasculate black men and maintain control over them. So when he was asked about it after his SL performance, you know, he had something to say. But instead of dragging Kevin C, chose to spill the tea on the industry itself. He pointed out that it's been a long-standing tradition for black men to don women's clothing in a quest for fame and success. Cad made it clear that he wasn't trying to put Kevin on blast, but talking about the bigger issue. At the end of the day, Kevin doesn't have to worry about what people are going to say about him wearing a dress because of the long ride of dress wearing people before him. So now we have Big Mama's house one, two, and three. Yeah. I've never seen Medina in a pants suit. I think she wears dresses. So now I'm saying, why are we thinking of a little Kevin Hart? Because I said it was his turn next. In that interview, Kat didn't throw any shade at Kevin. Instead, he admitted that Kevin was just doing what he had to do to survive in this cutthroat world of Hollywood. But Kevin took it the wrong way and decided to clap back on The Breakfast Club. Kevin slammed Kat, accusing him of lying. He also claimed that Kat's career didn't blow up because he couldn't stay clean and was battling addiction. When people are against the Illuminati, they get punched in the face all the time. The press hates them. Nobody likes them. Back then, the rumor mill was buzzing with claims that Kat was hooked on drugs. And Kevin took this and ran with saying Kat's career tanked because he was doing drugs. He even blamed Kat for his own failures, saying Kat wouldn't own up and kept pointing fingers at everybody. Else, but do you ever notice how the industry loves to label anyone spilling secrets as crazy or on drugs? We've seen the same playbook with multiple truth-tellers like Kanye, Dave Chappelle, and of course Cat Williams. But anyways, this was just the start of Cat and Kevin's saga. One thing Kevin might have forgot is that Cat has a memory like an elephant and can hold a grudge for forever. Five years later, Cat finally got his revenge on Club Shay, and he didn't hold back on Club Shay. K. Cat dragged Kevin through the mud suggesting that Kevin sought out to the industry for fame and power. He called out Kevin for bowing to Hollywood's whims, allowing himself to be humiliated for success, and hinted that wearing a dress might have been part of some humiliation ritual, and Cat had plenty to. Say he didn't sugarcoat, not a drop of it. But why Cat didn't stop there, he also revealed that Kevin's so-called sold-out shows were just smoke, and mirrors claiming Kevin ever actually sold out a show, but faked it to look like a big success. And Kat kept coming with the shade, calling Kevin an industry plan with a suspiciously fast rise to fame. He pointed out that Kevin's climb to stardom was anything but organic, suggesting he was propped up by Hollywood right from the start. Frustration with Kat Williams comes from, you keep pointing at Hollywood. Hollywood this, the white man, this, this, and this. When do you take responsibility for your actions? You had the shot. Cat was in that position. That was you were the guy. You were set up to be the star. You didn't show up to work. You f***ed off promo shoots. You f***ed off your promo a lot of trips that they had set up for you. You became a risk to the studios, which is why the studio stopped f***ing you. Why was he a risk? He chose you. Take responsibility for what you chose to say, you know what, I gotta fix me. 
and I'm going to come back and I'm going to stand up for comedy. Kat was definitely vicious, but Monique took it to the next level during her interview on Club Shay because she also tore into Kevin big time. She exposed Kevin as a two-faced snake, claiming that he betrayed her after she was blackballed by Oprah and Ty Perry. You know, all about how Tyler Perry and Oprah blackball Monique when she refused to do a free press tour for the movie Precious. So I'm not even going to bore y'all with all those details. Go check the other videos. But after she was blackballed, nobody wanted to work with her because nobody wanted to get on Oprah and Tyler's bad side. But according to Monique, Kevin actually went out of his way to act like he was going to be a real friend and stick beside her. In 15 years in Hollywood, no one in Hollywood has a memory of going to a sold-out Kevin Hart show, never being in a line for him, never getting a standing ovation at any comedy club. He already had his deals when he got here. Have we heard of a comedian that came to L.A. and in his first year in L.A. he had his own sitcom on network television and had his own movie called Soul Plane that he was leading? No, we've never heard of that before that person or since that person. What do you think a plant is? Because they tell you that there's no gatekeepers, but we keep seeing the same people open the gate. Didn't Kevin open the gate let Tiffany in? And he now opening it up for, Don't such and such open the gate. What do you mean there ain't no gatekeepers? There's a hundred gates out here. But did he really fulfill his promise and help Monique get back on her feet? Well, she claimed he acted like her rid or die promising to stick with her through thick and thin, even though she was already blackballed and treated like a pariah in the industry. She believed him because he seemed so genuine. But after all those promises, he ghosted her and acted like she didn't even exist. The worst part, he wasn't even bold enough to break things off himself. He had other people do the dirty work for him. Kevin Hart. And you know when Cat Williams said gatekeepers? Yeah. Kevin Hart. <laughs> I do his um, podcast. Yes. And I want y'all to re-listen to the podcast so you can hear it for yourself. When he first comes on, he says, you're like my mother, you're like my aunt, you're like my sister. Okay? Mm -hmm. Then we do the podcast. We speak about the Tyler Perry situation. Oprah Winfrey, he said, I don't really know Oprah, but I'm going to reach out to Tyler. Appreciate that. Kevin kept his word. He reached out to Tyler Perry. Kevin Hart called me back about maybe a week or so later. He said, Mo, I talked to Tyler. He said he don't want to revisit it. He said, but I tell you what, let's move past that, Mo. Let's just move past that and let's just do great things. So whatever That's what Kevin said. I want you to hear me, Kevin Hart. Let's move past that, Mo. Let's do some great things together. Don't even worry about it. Whatever y'all want to do, I will partner with you. I'll executive produce with you. You just let me know what you want to do. Then when he came back with, I got you. I didn't ask Kevin Hart to do anything. He said, I'll executive produce. I'll partner with you. I said, good shit, Kevin, because we're in a deal with Endemol. And we're trying to get our talk show back. Mo, whatever it is, I got you. Now, Kevin Hart is one of the biggest entertainers right now in the world. Right. And was that? We got off the phone with Kevin Hart. We called in the mall immediately and said, Kevin Hart said, whatever we want to do, he got us, he's going to partner executive views. They was like, oh, this is incredible because when you put Kevin Hart's name on it, you already know what it is. Right. Two weeks go by. We get a call from in the mall. And the mall says, we just got a call from Kevin Hart's manager, Dave Becky. And Dave Becky said, Kevin doesn't want anything to do with Monique. So whatever she told y'all, he doesn't want to do anything with her, nothing. You know, he doesn't want any any kind of relationship with Monique. So what changed between the two weeks and when, and then plus he gave you a check, you gave the money back, then said he would partner with you, executive produce, whatever you need, Mo, hey, we got you. So what transpired, or what do you think transpired between then that two that two week period. Well, as soon as we got off the phone and they told us what Kevin manager David Becky said, I called Kevin Hart immediately. I said, Hey baby, we just got off the phone with Endemol and they said David Becky called them up and said, You don't want anything to do with me. He said, Mo, that's that's a miscommunication. I can tell you right now. I said, wait a minute. Are you okay though with this white man calling them up? Getting in between our relationship, something you said, he said, Mo, I'm, that's a miscommunication, and we're going to talk Tuesday. Don't worry about it. I'm, I'm telling you right now, it's a miscommunication. That was two years ago. If you talk to him, I talk to him. I've never talked back to Kevin Hart again. <laughs>